Captain's Log Supplemental. We have now been on our mission for several months, and I am now discovering the issues with our new loosened pet regulations. They were put in effect with good intentions, but I fear that there are some unintended consequences. Uh, for example, Lieutenant Zelnoy has brought an Andorian red bat as a pet on board. When he takes him out of his quarters to give him some exercise, someone thought it was supposed to be for the evening meal and almost killed it. They are apparently delicious with barbecued with yamak sauce. And don't get me started on Commander Pell's SETI eel. He swears they're harmless, but all I can picture is that damn thing burrowing into my ear and laying eggs. At least no one's tried to bring a moopsie on board. <laughs> Welcome back for another episode of Captain's Log Supplemental. Uh, my name's Rob, and I'm joined by my two friends and co-hosts, Stanford. Hello. And Chris. Hello. Captain's Log Supplemental is a Star Trek rewatch podcast. Each week we cover another episode of Star Trek, marching ahead in chronological order by star date. Uh, if you like what you hear, we'd appreciate you taking the time to rate and review us on your podcast supplier of choice. Those ratings go a long way to helping us reach more Star Trek fans. So, uh... This week's episode is Enterprise Season 2, Episode 12, The Catwalk. How do you guys feel about this one? Can, can I tell you about something completely unrelated first? Absolutely. Sure. Derail us immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to get a package from DHL, right? It's coming from, like, Thailand. And it was supposed to be here yesterday, okay? And it's like, it'll be here by 8 p.m. At, like, 7.56 p.m. I get an email that's like, there's an exception on your package. We're not delivering it. <laughs> the exception was, it was they in, couldn't get to your house in time. Right. <laughs> yeah, was, it, like, was it stuck in customs or something? It was like, geez, it was on the truck. It was on the truck. And then they're like, no, fuck you. I'm like, all right. Well, I'm like, all right, well, they'll probably just redeliver it today. This morning, I look at the thing and there's been no update to it. It still just says like, there's an exception. <sighs> and I'm like, huh. So... I messaged their little customer service robot and the robot's like, it says there's an exception. What do you want me to do? And I'm like, I know there's an exception. <laughs> I would like to fix that. And so the, the, the customer ro robot is like, well, let me get a, let me get one of my quote human colleagues for you, which I'm not sure a robot should be calling a human. Like, a, well, okay. I don't want to be accidentally like AI racist. <laughs> if they like to start taking over the world, but like the automated customer service script, it's terrible, does not need to call a human being a colleague. That's a little, this is a little denigrating. But, anyways, I get on the line with this guy, and this guy's like, All right, give me your stuff. I'm here. He's like, Okay, it looks like there was an exception. And, and, and I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember the exact line, but this is exactly th like the concept of what he said, which was. Yeah, our delivery driver was overworked, so he didn't deliver it yesterday. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? I'm like, oh, okay. And then he goes, would you like to reschedule that package to get delivered at another time? <laughs> like, what, what, you, no, I figured I'd just let you have it. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> yes, I would like it. Thank you. Can I have it today? No. No, 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 it'll be there tomorrow. And then my millennial kicked in, and I was basically like... Yes, package okay. daddy, whatever you want. Like, tomorrow is fine. <laughs> and I wish, yeah. like, I wish it was something important, but it's just some, like, Legos, because I want to make this Lego thing. So, like, it's not even, like, critical. What, le what kind of Lego thing? I'm going to make a Lego Mech Warrior mech. Oh, so cool. Oh. It's, it's going to be pretty badass. I found all... I, I found... This is a completely different topic. I found a, uh, I found like you can, you can get instructions online and then they provide you with a, li a parts list that you could put into this website. And this website like is a network of all these different Lego, like private sale, like, uh, aftermarket sailors. And so like you tell it all the parts you need and it just combs through their stock and sets up order forms for you, and you just click Bro. buttons. It's bad. That's awesome. The deets. Bricklink is the name of the 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 network site. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll put it okay. I'll put it in the show notes. It's apparently yeah yeah yeah. Apparently, yeah yeah yeah. Remind me, Chris, after this, and I'll do that. All right, sounds good. All right. Anyways, catwalk. Catwalk. Yeah. Um, um, so this was an episode. 
general general impressions was I actually you know I didn't mind this one. It was all right. It was all right. I, yeah. I, it was it was it was pretty much standard Star Trek, but there it was it was fine. Like it was good standard Star Trek. Yeah, I I feel like I've noticed a trend with Enterprise, and I don't I don't know if it's just because I haven't watched other Star Trek in a while. I don't remember this being a problem in Strange New Worlds. It's very obvious. They lay it on so thick every time someone is trying to pull the wool over Archer's eyes. Oh, like, yeah. It, it's just, it's painful. Like, it's, it's, for, it's The foreshadowing is, is not <laughs> subtle. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they bludgeon you with foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's been a problem for Wait, this which, entire show. What so are they far. foreshadowing? Oh, just like, the, the, the non, you know, upfrontness and, and you know, of the aliens. Like, oh, they're doing something shady. Yeah, uh, like in this one, okay. it was Captain Togram. Like, they're just, every time, every time you, every time that it's, you know, some random alien doing something shady, they're just super cagey with Archer. They refuse to give him information that would be critical yeah. for him to know at any given point. It does, like, it does, it does feel like Enterprise doesn't have any aliens that just don't have ulterior motives. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like the best yeah, yeah. we've got is that like Tellarite freighter captain that they called about that like, and he was like, well, I can't help you, but there's an automated repair station. Why don't you try that? Yeah. Like, there's the only alien they've had any contact with that wasn't, like, up to something stupid. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would say to Paul, but they also well, go count. out of their way to manufacture, like, Vulcan uh, conspiracies. Yeah. <laughs> to, like, yeah, make yeah, them hijinks. feel like the Vulcans are untrustworthy. Like, it, it, it's just weird. It's very weird. Right, right, right. But anyway... We start this episode off with uh, Enterprise in orbit of an uninhabited world with a, bl- a bunch of flora and fauna. <laughs> an uninhabited um, world, quote, teeming with life. Like, yeah. we, we really need to work on our definition of, an uh, like, uninhabited. I guess they mean, right. like, no sentient species? Well, listen, yeah, man, if they, if they can't make warp, they're not real people. <laughs> They've established this. Yeah, it's just like how the Europeans <laughs> discovered all this land over here. Like, uh-huh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, We're going to name this trip. land Virgin Isles because no one's ever been there before. <laughs> Ignore these people over here. <laughs> Ignore the, the, the natives. Yeah. Uh, Trip wants to go river rafting. I don't know why, but th- that's the thing he wants to do. Uh, a whole bunch of the crew are prepping to go to the surface uh, it, for a survey mission at Archer's command. When uh, Archer you know, gets hailed by a Captain Tagrim... And Captain Targum ships join them in orbit. Uh, they want to come aboard Enterprise uh, and discuss getting to Warp 7 in order to avoid a neutronic storm. You need to get to Warp 7 immediately. Yep. Uh, problem is, Enterprise can only make Warp 5. Whoopsie. Yeah. Yep. Uh, cue some faith of the heart. Uh, we come back after the break, uh, find out that T'Pol, who could not previously spot the storm, all of a sudden sees them on sensors, conveniently. Uh, the the crew begins discussing options for weathering the storm, because at this point it's painfully obvious that they're going to have to. Uh, apparently their new friends, for whatever reason, aren't willing to take them on board their own ship. So this was something that I was small. a little... Right. They had they had talked about at one point shoving it into the hangar bay, but it's not that small. Like you see this ship pulled up next to Enterprise. It's pretty big. And I can't decide if it's just another situation where like the script didn't match the uh the animation that was done, mm. like the CG. Yeah, it's that's an optical probably, illusion. That's probably most of it when that kind of Maybe. stuff happens. Yeah. Um, Flox notes that the ship might survive with some reinforcement, uh, uh, like of the hull plating that is, but the crew certainly won't. Uh, these neutronic storms cause a, a ton of radiation. And basically if you're a species that is, uh, I guess, weak to radiation, uh, you know, like humans tend to be, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, so Trip suggests the catwalks by each nacelle, uh, they're heavily shielded. I guess because of warp energy going through them. Um, so, so question here, since we brought up the sure. cells. I actually, yeah. I actually can mm. probably answer this. Why oh, is everybody in one of them? Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. I'm sorry. No, I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> was there was there something wrong with the other one? Why did we have to cram everybody into just the I, one? I can tell <sighs> you why the shielding there is is better. I can tell you that. Like it, that part, I understood actually. Yeah, it's the it's because the warp coils are so dense that radiation can't get through them. Like it's just right. it's the definition of a warp coil. Like right. I, I don't know. I kind of get it because like if you're the captain of a crew. I wouldn't want half of my crew completely unreachable for several weeks. Uh, I can get why they would want to cram everybody in the war. Yeah, the, the reason that I kind of headcanoned, because I had the same question. The reason I had headcanoned was, uh, are there two, like, like twofold. One, maybe they only had the time and resources to get one of them ready. Okay, all right. Or Fair. two, they only have one doctor. And this is a pretty, like, strenuous mm. thing to do to a bunch of people. Sure. So, like, maybe we shouldn't split our resources. Maybe it's better to just be more crowded and uncomfortable, but everyone's, you know, in one spot. Yeah. Okay, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it, I, but the actual reason is that neutronic radiation is actually left-handed radiation, so <laughs> only one of the nacelles was protected, actually. Yeah, I got you. I got you. That makes oh, sense. God. That totally makes sense. Forget the other thing. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're heavily shielded. Um, Flox, you know, after doing some calculations with Trip, um, agrees that it should be strong enough to save everyone. Uh, only problem is that it uh, hits a balmy 300 degrees while the reactor's running. So uh, they basically need to shut everything down on the ship to live. Mm -hmm. Which, that part seems odd to me. Because, like, the nacelles aren't an integral part to power production. All they do is create the warp field, right? Like the reactor makes the plasma yeah. and then sends the plasma to the nacelles to make the warp field. They could just not do that part and would still have plenty of power. Would they have to dump the plasma then? Well, they just don't make as much. They make as much as they need. You know, the ship's not always at warp. True. Plot, plot reasons. Hush. Yes. Plot reasons. Um, Travis, uh, once again, recounts about a time on the horizon where they also encountered a neutronic storm. I don't think he uh, actually used the word horizon, did he? I, he did. Oh, man. I'm, I'm I fairly certain it. he did. But it was for there, his experience was for six weeks, not just eight days. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was funny because he's saying, like, everything was fine until the emergency generators cut out. That's and right. Cue yeah. dramatic music. <laughs> Which, like,. Because, Time for a ghost story. Because they don't yeah. really use Travis well. He seems like kind of out of place here when it's like he's the expert. Like everyone should be asking him what to do. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He's, he's the hijinks guy, remember? Yep. He's the practical joker. So much hijinks. Shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, so Captain Tagram at this point claims that he and his crew are stellar cartograph cartographers. Um, and then takes a little too long to accept Archer's proposal to update their star charts. And again, this fil this whole feeds into the like it's blatantly obvious that they're lying to him, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're not doing a good job. I mean, they're they're shifty AF just coming out of the decontamination chamber. Yeah, right away. And actually, yeah. like this is one of those things where if I had to fault, like this episode was good. It was it was it was better than average. It could it have been great if they had dropped all of this shit. Mm. Like, it could have been a more interesting episode if the storm was the only problem they were dealing with the whole time. You know what we really needed, though? Some faith what? in the heart. No, we, we needed the dramatic montage we got of them oh my God. the air. Buckle <laughs> montage! Bucket line montage! <laughs> uh, the, the best part about this is the whole conversation with T'Pol and Phlox about saving all of Phlox's menagerie. Mm. I like how she's like, fine, I'll give you five cubic more uh, meters more. That's a lot yeah. of space. Five, yeah, that's a space. decent amount of space. Five cubic uh, meters is a fucking lot. I am glad that he got to keep all his animals, though. It would have been sad if they had to get rid of a couple. Although I'm surprised that none of them were like immune to the radiation. Maybe you just couldn't leave them alone that long, not knowing. Yeah, how they long still need to gone. eat. Jesus, Rob. Yeah. I just get like an automatic feeder, like like a cat or something. I don't know. <laughs> they press a button, they get a they get a treat, you know. Um, yeah, I, I like the little bit here. Flox <laughs> goes, "I'm not accustomed to making emotional appeals." <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Tapal gives him a couple extra cubic meters to make sure all the animals survive, which is very nice of her. Mm -hmm. 
very curious that at this point that other crew they encountered didn't at least just warp off on their own to save themselves. Uh, their Again, ship couldn't go that fast. Oh, I, di- I didn't realize that. Yeah, their ship, that. their ship only went like warp three or four. Gotcha. Um, at this point, one of the, uh, I can't remember the species, uh, one of Tagram's uh, cohorts uh, starts complaining with him about his claim about them being stellar cartographers. He goes, I don't know the first thing about stellar cartography. What if they ask us? Well, I, I can't at this okay. point, cat's out of the bag. Maybe this is me being very confident in my own abilities. I can't imagine stellar cartography is all that hard. Like the stars are already there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's not like you gotta like, you gotta like set up on a moon with one of those like survey tripod things. And then it's like, all right, I'm going to go to that star over there. I'll be, I'll, 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 I'll message you on the, on the, on the walkie talkie. You stay here. Like, well, I'd like the funny thing is they don't understand that the humans aren't even using their own stellar database at this point. Like they're using the Vulcan database, right? right? They don't know the first thing about what's out here. They could just show them like their version of like Google star maps and the humans would have been happy. <laughs> Google star maps. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Archer, you know, checks out the Vulcan database and returns to a, a conversation him and Paul had earlier where she had mentioned you know, a Vulcan ship being nearly destroyed by another class five neutronic storm. Um, the truth was that the ship was completely obliterated, including yeah. all of the crew. And to Paul replies with, uh, you know, I must have misremembered the situation incorrectly. Like that's a, that's a pretty big mistake to make. I think she was, uh, I have a note here. That's like, she's trying to be nice. Why you gotta be a dick. Like, I think she was just trying to be like trying to like calm improve morale. Well, not really improve it, but like, what's the point in telling everyone, by the way, that ship I'm talking about exploded and everyone died. Fuck you. We're all screwed. Like, that doesn't help. I guess so. But like, if she had told them the truth, I don't know, maybe Trip could have done some crazy engineering and kicked him to warp seven. He was already too busy putting a toilet in. (laughs) He had to to make the the captain's chair bucket. Yeah. (laughs) Captain's bucket. Captain's bucket. Um, I do like, which, I do like how we can see the neutronic wave when it's supposedly yeah. traveling at like a warp factor. Yeah. <laughs> Cause Archer's like, um, I, they didn't, I didn't realize it'd be so beautiful. Like, bitch, I think it's traveling faster than light by several like tens. Like you can't see that it, shit. It was also weird. And again, this might've just been, you know, a, a mistake. Well, not a mistake, but a miscommunication between the writers and the CG team. Like, it clearly had a top and a bottom. They could have, uh, like, even if they didn't want to try to outrun the storm horizontally, I feel like they could have made it vertically. I was no, so... We're, they, this is 2D space. Shut up. So, yeah, they yeah, said yeah. it's half a dozen light years wide. Now, I'm willing to allow, like, that narrow part to be the half a dozen light years. So, like, maybe right. that is the calculation that they made. And at... At warp five, a half a dozen light years would take about like a week or two. So like they only had four hours. So like maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it was narrow but wide, but the narrow part was the half a dozen light years. Mm, okay. You're uh, hand waving a lot of this out of my, my suspension of disbelief here. <laughs> uh, I love all the like the fiber optic cables that you see on the temporary <laughs> bridge. Say, by the way, I was say, they really did uh, to to do something with those. They had to just hang it around. I I I actually I I think they were using them as a source of light. That's actually kind of clever because like the cables there, and as long as they don't put too high a power through it, like it would be a good source of light. Until you try to sleep, which apparently was already a problem. <laughs> I don't know. It it was just really weird seeing it just loose. Like at the very least, they could have wrapped the cables. Yeah. But well, no, it's it's all right. They could sleep. They had already set up blanket forts in the in the catwalk. So. <laughs> they did. Yeah. There were so many cool ass blanket forts. There were. Um, by the way, the the bridge, like the the bridge proper, looks super badass in the emergency lighting. Did it, I didn't even notice? Yeah, it was really cool. I liked it a lot. It reminded me. Like I, I know we've said this before. It reminded me of like footage I've seen of the inside of U.S. submarines. Mm. Like it looked, mm. it looked very neat. 
Yeah. Um, Trip asks Archer if he'd like to try the captain's chair, which was just a bucket that was put on the ground with some cargo netting thrown over it for aesthetic purposes, I think. Um, Archer then gives his best attempt at a rallying speech to try and <laughs> My get no the crowd. Was, that was uh, inspirational? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. Uh, uh, at this point, Travis turns the whole ship around, steers them into the storm, and uh, they ride that like shock bow of the yeah. uh, the the wave of the storm. <laughs> and I have a I have a here that's like brace for impact, Porthos, because there's like a there's like a, a fairly long camera hold on Porthos. It's all right. Yeah. The goodest boy in Starfleet did make it through. Okay, he's fine. He did. He's fine. Yeah, good boy. Uh, Archer makes the rounds to cheer up the crew once everything's you know stowed away and they make it through most of the uh, the turbulence. Poor Hoshi. I forgot Hoshi has claustrophobia. And now she's just going to be stuck in a confined space with literally everyone well, on the ship for the next couple of days. I mean, it's fine. There's just they keep coming up with neuroses for her. So it's it's hard to keep track. Well, of to be fair, the claustrophobia the, thing they, they mentioned in that in fight or flight was like the third episode or whatever. When she was yeah, when the she was in the EVA suit. Yeah. Um, Archer asks Trip about their. Oh, here's the, the name of the species. Archer asks Trip about their tech rep friends. Um. They seem a little standoffish at this point and don't seem to enjoy their temporary human neighbors all that much. Um, also turns out that the Kret don't really need to sleep a whole lot, so they're also annoying the human neighbors. Yeah, but there's also a level uh, of, like, leave them the fuck alone. Yeah, like, again, it's this whole weird... I feel like they went out of their way in Enterprise to talk about the conflict... And yeah. the tension points between humans and other species. They and they make such a big deal out of it. It feels like yeah. the humans are like stupid meeting other aliens. This is stupid. Like, <laughs> like you're, the this is your entire there. fucking job. At least put on <laughs> yeah. a strong face, you know. Yeah, like everyone who was selected for this mission should have received at the very least sensitivity, like cultural sensitivity training before they went. And well, I, yeah, the interview they, process should have been like. They go in for the interview and they don't realize that it has begun because there's like in the waiting room, like a really like chatty person that just starts talking to them and how they <laughs> handle that situation is part of the interview process. Yep. They walk into the interview room and the interviewer just doesn't speak a word and they have to initiate just like mm, weird stuff. That's another like good that. one too. Or doesn't speak their language for like mm -hmm. the first half of the interview. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing Archer just just shouting at, at him at the person like a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> Where the is the, the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> all the way up to the office, there's a kid they like throw into the elevator who just hits all of the buttons and they just <laughs> see how you react to it. Man, we would be the best like filter for starfleet i mean i ain't getting on those <laughs> fucking ships but i'll i'll find people who aren't good at it either i mean you'll get on the ship just as long as you don't have to use a transporter right it's fucking shuttlecraft yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> uh so yeah um <clears throat> reed goes to flox about some gi issues that he's experiencing uh, apparently a lot of the crew are, are having motion sickness from all the turbulence and lack of windows so uh uh I guess Flox just got like, what is it called? Midadrine just on tap for all of these poor Dra people. Dramamine. 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 Midadrine is like the, the I was on that for yeah. a while. That was, uh, that was, uh, anti, anti spast, anti spastic medicine. Yeah. Or uh, wait, is Archer that the blood pressure in. one? It might be the blood, it's pressure, the blood pressure one. one. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Orthostatic blood Sorry. pressure. That's for raising your blood pressure. My mic was off. I was thinking of baclofen. Baclofen is the antispastic. Also, I just need to to follow uh, back on um, Hoshi being afraid of tight spaces. How did she get into space? <laughs> uh, not with the transporter, as it turns out, because that only happened once and it was bad. <laughs> still, still not sure how she managed to get to space, but okay. <laughs> Hopefully, crying uh, when it was yeah, parked. It's parked. <laughs> They uh, they did it like they did uh, like an A team with Mister T. They just did not. They dosed her with some milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when she woke up, she was on the ship. Yeah, 
She just drugged herself with some Benadryl, so she slept the whole shuttle pod right up. There you go. Yep. Um, Archer checks in on Travis, who's uh, trying to steer them clear of the worst of the eddies, because apparently in neutronic storms, there are plasma eddies the size of solar systems, it looked like. They were huge. Uh, catches up on some water polo matches, well, uh, okay. much to the annoyance of Tavall. Okay, I have I have notes all over this fucking seg- sequence. Okay, mm-hmm. first uh-huh. of all, Archer's like, well, so-and-so can relieve you. What do you mean can? Do you have a shift schedule or not? Y'all yeah, are the mil- like they, was the plan for Travis to just be doing this for eight days? Yeah. Like, they already have, like, at least two shifts, right? I, I, I would assume there's three shifts. I would assume there are three shifts as well. The first, second, and third. Right. Yeah, so I, I don't know why they would... Yeah, I don't know. Like, w- were they just hoping that, again, because of Travis's experience on the horizon, he would be able to save them all from all of this all of the time forever? Yeah, for weeks? I, I have no idea. And, well, eight days, right? And then... Before I start complaining again, we all have to acknowledge that Porthos is having the best goddamn time. Like, this is his best week on the oh, ship. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so, so many, many people to pet, pet him. Just not not oh, trapped my in Archer's cabin. He's probably getting so much fucking food that people don't want to eat. Oh, so much cheese. Yeah, that, that dog's having a great goddamn day. Mm-hmm. Um, Now, yeah, so Archer and T'Pol are, like, sharing... Uh, like a bunk space, which is like that. That makes sense. They're the two top officials in the ship. Um, and like he's watching water polo and it's bothering her because he's got the sound. On. Do they not have headphones in the future? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> and nor do they have headphones. But when he's finally like, fine, I'll stop watching my water polo so you can work or whatever. She's like tapping on her pad and it's making little beep boops <laughs> with every fucking. <laughs> they don't have a silence the buttons option either. The future yeah. sucks. Like. <laughs> Like, don't forget, at this point, when did the iPhone come out? Like, 2004? That is correct, I don't yes. think I don't think the iPhone existed. Yeah, but, like, yeah, like, but like the show. my Blackberries and, and, yeah. and, 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 and uh, you know, PDAs and stuff, they, they existed. Uh, that's true. Yeah. And, my, and my flip phone had, like, a setting for, like, the buttons have feedback when you push them and the buttons don't. Mm-hmm. ICQ could do that. <laughs> like... <laughs> What's your number? How many digits you got? Eight one zero three six zero seven zero, baby. I hate you so much. <laughs> yeah. I actually never, I never did ICQ. Really? Just, yeah. No. I apparently I missed that. I, I just had AIM. Oh, uh, okay. I, yeah, I had AIM and ICQ, and I was on Merc for a while too. Don't even know what that one is. Mirc I don't know what Merc is either. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Well, Mirc is a is a client, but the old IRC chat rooms, the old telnets. Yeah. 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 So uh, Archer picks up a conversational trip comparing the situation to a camping trip, uh, suggests that to Paul fraternize with the rest of the crew and get them to know a little better, which, again, Archer needs to stop telling to Paul how to do her job. She's doing a very <laughs> yeah. good job on she's, her own. She's doing fine. I, I do wonder, like, is the planet OK or do we just assume the planet got fried? No, all, the, all of them are dead. Yeah, they, they would have to be dead. Planets famously uh, that, not moving faster than the speed of light. No, well, I mean, but well, I mean, like Earth's magnetosphere protects it from more, a lot of radiation. Yes, way more radiation protection than than steel, right? Like, so I oh, could that's a see. Good point. They should have just landed the ship. Well, and and maybe the ship can't land, which is like that's that's fine. But there is a level of like I, I don't know. They didn't say whether or not the planet was going to be okay. But if the planet was going to be okay, they should have just gone camping for a few days, you know? Yeah, right. Or at least, yeah. like... They could just... They could shuttle down. Well, maybe not in four hours, Most of but... the crew down. Or as many as they could get down in four hours, right? That yeah. way you've, you've loosened space up on up on board. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they could have survived down there, like, off of the local flora and fauna. Like, it would have made just living for a couple of weeks a lot easier for a whole crowd. Yeah. Stupid enterprise. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? <clears throat> yeah, we also uh, right after all that we get uh, we get a nice little callback with Malcolm's uh, little pineapple cobbler there because you know he likes pineapple. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, Reed, Hoshi, Trip, and Travis are all wagering food rations in a card game. Um, Reed is an annoyed at the lack of showering facilities and Malcolm, starts blaming of course, Trip, is bitching because it's on, the only thing his character. God does on damn, I fucking it's, hate his character so much. 
Like uh, I, I, will, I know we were I know we were joking about this earlier, but he is simultaneously the most British British person ever and the least British British person ever. Yeah, he, like he definitely has like the this this the Pompey complaining down, but he doesn't have that like like silent bearing of like bad times. At yeah, all. There, there's yeah. no like keep calm and carry on. It was yeah, just none completely of that shit. lost on him. Um, also, fun trivia note here. Uh, this is apparently the only time that Chef is seen in the series, and you only see him really? from like the thigh down. I was yeah. wondering about that because I saw it's, him wander by, and I'm like, weird that shit. Because you don't really because the next oh, time man. you see him, kind of in asterisks, is the very last episode when Frakes is playing him. <clears throat> yes, I, true. It's actually a running gag uh, in the show. It was apparently out of respect for their food stylist Dorothy Duder or Dutter. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Um. Uh, but also the chef was played uh, by frequent Star Trek stand-in Richard Sarstedt, who, coincidentally, was a stand-in for Jonathan Frakes in a Next Generation episode. That oh. is coincidental. What? Okay, so out of respect for her because she's the one actually doing the food prep and stuff? Exactly, yeah, who's okay. actually, like, making a food okay. that appears on screen. So, and I know this is going to be a wild concept to 2001. Why not just put her in? <laughs> Why not just let her be the fucking chef? Yeah. <laughs> Is that, uh, well, did we already hit our women quota on the ship? Because a third the of the a third of the ship is women. That's too many women. See, they couldn't yeah. get her in a cat suit, so mm, yeah, they, <laughs> they couldn't find a they couldn't find a sexy uh, chef outfit because it wasn't right. Halloween. Yeah, right. Yeah, just a low cut apron. God damn this fucking show. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, Reed is definitely the crew member I would least like to be stuck with an emergency situation. By the way, like. Mm -hmm. Literally unbearable. Uh, the Tecret start a cooking fire right above the plasma manifold and get yelled at by Trip because apparently you shouldn't. Oh man, you know, I feel have an open so flame bad over for a plasma these aliens. Manifold. Like I feel so bad for them. I don't. Who puts an open flame in a confined space? Come on. Yeah, but they're like, we can't, we can't, we can't eat your food. And so we're say hungry. something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, everyone's being mean to them. No sympathy. I, they suck. All, all they had to do was talk with Archer. <laughs> Fucking all hell. they had to do was talk with Archer. and, and They already feel like they're being a burden, and they feel like if they ask for anything, they're going to be fucking, the people are going to be mad at them even more than they already are. So they don't feel like they they're being a burden. They make stupid decisions. It's not that they feel like they're being a burden. They're actively lying to the crew. Well, yeah, but that's just bad writing. That's not their fault. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, like they don't know where the fucking plasma manifolds are. I don't even know what that means. Like, why if they does don't fire... know where the plasma manifolds? Why would you create have an open flame that's creating smoke in a confined space like this? Okay, first of all, Star Trek loves having open flames, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> Second of all, I'm not sure a flame actually affects a plasma manifold. Anyways, plasma is you know what? I, okay, I'm going to do a little science lesson with Stanford. Here's a little science lesson with Stanford. Fire is plasma. That's what it is. Yep. So what's the issue? You leave these poor bastards alone. They just want to eat their fucking dinner. Listen, if you add plasma to plasma, it explodes. <laughs> That's apparently the problem here. No, it explodes when it's dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Trip gets pulled away by Archer. Uh, brings him up to their little ad hoc helm. Uh, he has him look at uh, some weird little warnings they're getting. Apparently the matter and antimatter injectors are both back online. Uh, so Trip suits up for a quick jaunt to engineering to find out why. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out they've got visitors. <laughs> there are other aliens on board looking for Tagram and his crew. Uh, turns out they're fugitives. Surprise. <laughs> and the intruders are some sort of militia force. They call them a militia force. So I'm guessing they're not official military uh, but I mean, the, the, the Nazi uniforms kind of gave it away. Yeah, the, uh, th this militia is hunting them down because Tagram and his, you know, little friends are all deserters from the militia. The, 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 um, the, these guys were basically like, OK, we need a backstory for these guys. Oh, I know they're fucking evil. Next. Yeah, like, yeah, they're just generic evil assholes. We yep. use the word militia. You, uh, you understand what that means, right? Um, Archer's Furies at first. Militia are basically trying to start up Enterprise to steal it. 
uh, the militia engineers do manage to get the reactor running again. And uh, Archer, you know, preps his crack team of Reed and T'Pol to help him stop the Tecret from taking the Enterprise. Uh, Trip has to basically talk to Paul and Reed through shutting down the plasma coils because because he was already out in the radiation, he can't go back out again without I, you know, further risking his health. So I guess they have comms. I don't know why they weren't talking to Trip they in do. the first place. Well, like it, it send... also blows. It also blows the like. Why didn't we have them in the other catwalk right, as well? Right. But there's because also some level like to each other. Yeah, they like send Trip out on this 20 minute excursion, and they're like, "All right, good luck. We'll see you in 20 minutes." Just talk to them the whole time. They hate talking to people when they're like doing stuff. <laughs> you know, you know what the problem is? They're millennials. They only like texting. <laughs> Yes. I hate so, I hate you so much right now. That was a stupid ass <laughs> joke, and I hate you. Tell me I'm wrong. You know I'm how not, much we hate talking on the phone. I'm not sure where we are, but I have a note here that says this is fucking atrocious acting, and I can only assume it was Scott Bakula, but I don't remember what he was doing. <laughs> oh, I know what he was doing. It was um, it was the point where he gets captured with Trip, or, or when Archer is talking to them. When when Archer's talking with them, that that was the atrocious acting. Yeah, because it was really bad. He's good yeah, at, so, at pretending badly to not know something. Yeah. Um, Archer distracts the militia leader with some theatrics over comms. Um, basically threatens to blow up Enterprise to try and scare him off the ship. Oh, but, that's you know, right. Yeah, that was... Doesn't really work. That was real bad. Yeah. So like uh, <laughs> he calls back to Travis, and who's still piling the ship for some reason. And tells them to uh, steer into one of the eddies. What do you mean for some... Oh, because Travis hasn't, like, been relieved in three days? No, he's yeah, fine. Yeah. He's good. I like how uh, there was a point where Trip is like, I don't mean to rush you, but uh, hurry the fuck up. Like, we're gonna die. Like, he was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah so at, at this point, Archer gets spotted by some of the militia, um, winds up in a firefight, and he's now stuck where he's Which, at. To your previous point on one of the other episodes, uh, the, the phaser fight choreography uh, is 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 getting better and better to be much honest. better it much better yeah. it was much better in this one yeah um to paul and reed managed to paul and reed managed to get the reactor sequencers offline in time to save the rest of the crew from cooking alive back in the catwalk um and then uh travis gets just close enough to the eddy to uh scare off the leader of the militia who reluctantly orders his crew to abandon ship um, at which point, Archer phones back to the temporary helm and has Travis steer clear from the Eddie. Uh, we get a very touching scene then where T'Pol joins the crew for movie night for the first time ever. And uh, Trip invites her to come back next week. Archer lets the crew know that Travis is getting them clear of the storm a few days early. Uh, and uh, uh, They're playing this movie. And like Archer's like, we're going to get clear of the store a few days early. And everyone's like, yay. And there's like an extra standing next to the monitor that like snaps that monitor off. He's like, fuck this movie. Woo! <laughs> like, it's, it's like there's there is no, no delay. That man is like, God, nope. thank God I don't have to watch this fucking, which I think was the day the <laughs> earth stood still. I think that's what they were talking about. Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. Good movie. Yeah, and then uh, Archer sees Tigram and the other deserters off the ship and then very dramatically shuts the door to the catwalk. And we wrap. So uh, fun, another uh, fun little trivia thing. Apparently this was the only episode of Star Trek that ever featured product placement. What was the product placement? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was going to say at Stanford, do you know? Were they MREs? Like <laughs> Product Pineapple. placement. Fuck, I can't. Mm, uh, wait, is it because of the, the advertisement in the background of the water polo match? Uh, you're, you're close. Uh, no, it was actually Archer's water polo bag had a Nike logo on it. That's right. It did oh. have a Nike logo on it. I noticed that. I forgot about that. Oh my God. I wonder if that was intentional. Undoubtedly. No, Undoubtedly. there's absolutely no way that was intentional. Star Trek has so very carefully removed all of that shit from all of its episodes. There's no way that was intentional. Well, you heard it, heard it here first. Nike survives for the next couple of centuries. Hmm. Winds up in yep. space. Well, that could just be a really old bag. Also true. Yeah. Maybe he inherited it from his like, his great, grandpappy's great, 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 grandpappy. Great, 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 great or, or maybe that's just the logo of that like water polo team. Mm. 
because like they used to be sponsored yeah. by Nike, but then they like forgot about it, and I was like, well, well this must just have be, to be our like logo. Oregon's uh, water polo team because that's 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 Nike's college right there is Oregon. Mm. Somehow so. you're nerdier than the rest of us for knowing that information. <laughs> You should, it's like they're, they actually, they, they make like so many different uniforms for their football team and they're all like bright colors and ridiculous looking. Green and yellow, man. Yeah. But like, not just green and yellow, like, like neon greens and yellows and Hell just yeah, like man. patterns and shit. Yeah. Be garish, man. I'm tired of all these uniforms looking the same. You need to watch some soccer, my friend. Hmm. So yeah. Uh, what would you guys think of this one? What would you give the rating? I, yeah, it's I, three. I say yeah. it's a three for me. I wrote, meh, it's whatever. Three three out of five. It would have been... It was, it was above meh whatever for me. Like, not not a lot above it. Because I generally enjoyed the episode, but... I, I but yeah, found it was, it was fine up until the assholes showed up. I think the episode would have been better if the aliens that were, like, 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 hiding out with them, they weren't trying to be deceptive. They were absolutely telling the truth. And, like... The, the, the act three climax and stuff was like the storm was fucking with the ship and they had to like fix something like under the time pressure and the radiation and stuff. And like, that was the actual problem rather than once again, doing this like kind of twisty, oh, the aliens are actually immune to the radiation and we can't trust anyone ever again. Like, L- listen, man, I it, think it can't be enterprise with trustworthy aliens. Right. And that's like, it would have just been like, it's okay for the plot to be like the storm sucks and we need to survive it. That's an okay plot for an episode. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's what they should have stuck with. I will be right back. George is throwing a fit. Once God again. damn it, George. Fucking George. George is a rabbit, everyone. This rabbit is <laughs> enormous. This rat it's not quite like that Welsh giant hair thing, but like this rabbit's got to weigh like what, 10 pounds? Chris, have you seen it in li- in like real life? No, just the pictures. Oh my god, he's huge. He's this big old furry rabbit. Flemish giant is what you were thinking of, but yeah, it, that is not, thing. it is it is not that. Welsh, Flemish, the same shit, right? <laughs> I feel like you just insulted a whole bunch of Europeans. Yeah, but they're not going to probably get back to me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, <laughs> no problem. We definitely weren't talking about you. Great. All right. No, well, just uh, your just your chunky rabbit. I would uh, I would also rank this episode of three. It was a uh, standard trek for me. It was definitely better than the last three episodes have been. Yep, I think that's fair. All right. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, we'll. Uh, We'll be back in a couple of minutes here for the deep dive. Stupid rabbit couldn't have just held off for like five more seconds. Like, are there not enough communication officers that graduate from Starfleet? It's just Hoshi. Shit. That they like, have to drug the one who is afraid of tight I'm not even, I'm going to be honest. I, it is not entirely clear whether Hoshi actually went through That's true. Starfleet. Like Archer knows Shoes her. Are- yeah, she, she is was a college ensign. professor. But Does like, no one else have maybe, qualifications that would like. I feel well. There's like, crewman random guy, but uh, he only he only <laughs> works when yeah, yeah yeah during the fever dream. Uh, but really you know why just though? Don't understand how you could have that much fear and be like, yeah, that's fine. That's enough. Uh, fun fact: claustrophobia can absolutely um, exclude you from service on yes. a submarine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's just, uh, she's simply the best. She's better than all the rest. At, at communicating with aliens. Except when it's convenient for the plot. Yeah, yeah. Then she's, like, definably bad at it. Or if her computer's broken. So she's not even good at her job? Well, no, she's really have... good at her job when that's not the plot. Yeah. Oh. She talked to a cum monster using light. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, wh- mm. <laughs> what part did of I my, even... did I stutter? What part of my sentence did you not understand? A tum, tum monster? No, cum. no, no. Cum, cum monster. monster. It's, it's, it's a jizz. Uh, semen it's beast. A, it's, a, it's a jizz monster. Oh, God. Thank you. Okay. Spoochenstein. <laughs> Spoochenstein. <laughs> Rob. 
The spunk nest Bravo, monster. Bravo, be able to trust trust Ooh, you. Spunk nest I'm monster. Sorry. That's good. Your husband's a bad influence. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's just, it's the weddy. <laughs> <laughs> What? No. Uh, I had to think about that one for a second. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's, I did that's too. Good. We call him Spunky. Spunky, Spunky, faster than lightning. Whoa. No one you, you see, see is gooier than, than he. Than, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everything about this. All right. <laughs> you guys ready for the deep dive? I'm ready. Yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, so for this week's deep dive, I thought we could jump into a segment I would like to call Storms in Star Trek. Also, welcome back. Uh, yes, welcome back. Um, no, you're not welcome back, boo. So th- this Storms? is now... Are you telling me, Rob, that there's been another storm on this show? This is, in fact, the second storm in season two. And we're only halfway in it. <laughs> Um, I, I decided to exclude terrestrial storms, and we're only going to be talking about space storms because Star Trek is a space show. Yeah. Well, anyway. I mean, they did have that terrestrial storm in the in the transporter episode, right? That that made them do the transport. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, you know what? I guess we will be talking about one terrestrial storm because that was the one from season but- two. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, diamagnetic storms. Uh, do you have any di- idea what these actually are? Diamagnetic? So there's that, two magnets? It's so yes. they're so magnetic you die, right? That's what it there's, is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a very strong uh, polaric energy, and it just rips you apart. You know what they should do? They should reverse that. Polaric energy. Yeah. Reverse that polaric energy. That'll solve the problem. Yeah, so diamagnetic storms are defined as storms with high levels of polaric ion energy. Um, um, interestingly enough, quick, quick question. Uh huh. Can an ion be polarized? Isn't that an oxymoron? An ion by definition is polarized. No, an ion by definition has one charge. Uh huh. Polarized thing has two charges, like a polarized magnet. It's, it's negatively charged ions. That go south, I think. I don't I know, don't man. think Star Trek knows what words mean. <laughs> it's words. That has it. already been well established. Yeah. Star Trek techno babble. So anyway, uh, interestingly enough, this isn't the first time that Star Trek's uh, talked about polaric energy. Um, polaric ion energy tests were banned in the Alpha and Beta quadrants after Romulan research station exploded in a polaric ion detonation. Um, turns out polaric ion energy had enough juice to vaporize all life on an entire planet and could generate, uh, what Star Trek refers to as subspace fractures. Uh, I'm not really sure what that means, but, uh, like the Omega particle this fucking subspace. Uh, this is the same phenomenon that caused, um, Janeway and Paris to get transported like back in time in the time and time again episode in Voyager. <laughs> yeah, that that's a that's a surprisingly good episode considering it's like time travel in episode two of Voyager. <laughs> um, well, apparently it's the same kind of energy that uh, Hoshi and Trip both like bailed off that planet with the transporter to try and get away from that storm. That was also a diamagnetic storm. So. That was episode number one in the season. God damn a storm. Diamagnetic storms. Uh-huh. Um, episode two includes the, the second classification of storm that we'll be covering tonight. Plasma storms. Uh, neutronic storms are a storm of plasma energy that is traveling at faster than light speeds. And it can kill susceptible uh, species with its radiation within minutes. So... Even while protected, Trip only was going to survive tonight uh, for about 20 minutes. That's why he couldn't go back out that second time, right? Right. So, yeah, yeah. Really yeah, nasty Radiation stuff. is cumulative, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so the other place that it featured pretty frequently was uh, Deep Space Nine. I don't know if you guys remember, but you know that section of space uh, that they refer to as the Badlands 
in Deep Space Nine. Yeah, it's like that part of um, the border between the Federation and Cardassian Union. Uh-huh. The the Badlands is also where the caretaker station was in the very first Voyager episode. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, plasma storms were apparently a very common event there, but exceedingly rare elsewhere. And that's part of why the Badlands were avoided by like space freighters and all. Um, it wound up, you know, being a frequent route for the Maquis and the Bajorans. The Maquis, trying to yep. They avoid were the Cardassians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is good old fashioned electromagnetic storms. Uh, so again, this is like a thunderstorm, but entire regions of space covered with potent electromagnetic fields. Uh, just like other storms on this list, you know, it, we see a lot of Star Trek episodes where, you know, oh, we can't use the transporter because there's some sort of storm or we can't use communications or shields because there's some sort of storm. Uh, apparently this messes with a lot of starship systems as well. Um, a lot of convenient plot points where crews could no longer use, you know, vital systems that, you know, drove the plot for episodes. Um, one of my favorite, uh, just straight up electromagnetic storms is the TNG episode power play. It's where, uh, you remember those like disembodied Uxmal prisoners uh, that are yeah. condemned to float through the electromagnetic storms of some random moon. Uh-huh. Like it was their you know, prisoner colony it was there right. in Australia, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's the one where, uh, the, the prisoners steal the bodies of Troy, Dana and O'Brien and then hold Picard, Worf and Keiko hostage. I was just about to say, like, I'm assuming based on how TNG goes that, um, somebody gets mind controlled or their body possessed because there's absolutely no secrets on that ship. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Uh, apparently the ultimate prison is, um, Stripping you of your physical being, throwing you in a thunderstorm that just continues forever on a random moon out in space. I mean, it does Man, sound pretty. Sounds terrible. pretty fucking awful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, but great. I like thunderstorms though, so I don't know. You can also like pretend you're Thor forever. <laughs> I bet that gets real um, old to your to your jail neighbors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I um, am Thor, God of Shut Up. <laughs> And then a, uh, a subclassification of electromagnetic storms are ion storms. These are magnetic storms with ions moving thousands of kilometers per hour. Um, this actually we saw in season one of Enterprise. Uh, that's what caused the of uh, the crash of that Kantari ship we see in Oasis in season one. Right. Um, ion oh, no, storm yeah. feels like one of those default phrases that I've heard so many times that it just mm-hmm. became meaningless. Yeah, and then another one. This one was kind of weird because it was classed as both a an ion storm and a plasma storm. Um, the Denarius Belt in Deep Space Nine within the Bajoran system. It's that big plasma belt that sort of like divides the Bajoran system in half. Okay, so I have a very complicated question for you. Okay. How? That's it. That's my entire question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the, the interesting thing about all of these different classifications is that they're all basically electromagnetic storms, just different kinds of electromagnetic forces. It's like storms typically occur when there's a strong difference in polarity, right? Like you either have a lot of positively charged energy moving into a negative area or negative energy moving into a positive area. That's what in, creates a storm, right? In, in, in Star Trek? Yes. I mean, okay. in general, like even in real life, like it's, well, n- it's weird that they have all of these fancy names, well, but they're in, really in, all just on earth. Storms are caused by heat and cold mixing, which I guess you could call negative energy and positive energy. Like not all storms well, on earth have lightning. Like they don't all, they're not that's all, true. that's an electrical storm. Yeah. I, I guess I, that's what I mean though, is like an electrical storm. These are all just variations of electromagnetic. Yeah. A hurricane ain't caused by fucking electricity that shit's just caused by tides and or tides um oh my god what is the word for a bunch of water moving around in the ocean uh um, current convection currents. Currents. thank you currents jesus the word current just uh, gone gone from my head today <laughs> you remember the uh, itcz yeah the intercontinental inter Continental transition zone. ICTG? Transition zone. Uh, it's where uh, it's where it's, if you're in there, you're going to get um, monsoon season. That's basically you're going to get hurricaned. You're going to have a bad time. Yeah, that's that's yeah. why that's why India has monsoon season. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, long story short, storms are bad. OK, 
avoid them. So uh, across any of your research, did you find out whether or not any of this has any basis in reality in terms of like space? Nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the The only ones, the only ones that we know for sure do exist would be, I guess it's more of a play on plasma, but solar wind. That's, that's the only thing that would really affect us in, in you, space that we know of so far. Is solar wind a plasma? I guess. Well, like like a solar ejection or um, coronal ejections, ejection yes. coronal ejection. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about. Even the solar. Well, I don't know if it's plasma at the point where it becomes solar wind, but is I mean, solar wind not just the same thing? Is, that's not just light. It like is a like a light sail. Light. Oh, it's not. Okay. What the fuck is solar wind? I don't know now. Oh <laughs> goddamn! All right, <laughs> stretch, stretch. I'm gonna look it up. Stretch. Okay. Taking a stretch break. That's not what stretch me. Oh my god. I think, do you mean vamp? That's another, <laughs> but like stretch is in like take up some time while I do something. Oh god. This conversation. Solar is wind is a stream time. of charged particles released from the upper atmosphere of the sun called the corona. The plas the this plasma, okay, mostly consists of electrons, protons, and alpha particles with kinetic energy between 0.5 and 10. Kinetic energy units. I don't know what KEV <laughs> is. Oh, wait, what I guess over over. The electron the volt again? is an electron volt. Kilo okay. electron volts. Interesting. The composition of the solar wind plasma also includes a mixture of materials found in the solar plasma and a bunch sure. of shit. Okay. The more you know. Weird. Reading rainbow. Um, yeah. Okay, so, but like, because I guess like space is... Big, and this <laughs> you think it's a long <laughs> way to the chemist that's just peanuts to space um <laughs> space feels from my you know relatively uninformed but also like you know I, i'm on the internet so i know some shit space is relatively static in terms of like day-to-day -day stuff right like no. when we think of things happening in space they happen over long periods of time so it's just funny to me that like in Star Trek every goddamn week there's some like massive light years across storm or something happening that seems very very like exciting when yeah, well, I don't think we've observed any phenomena like that whatsoever in actual space. It would be space. a very interesting show if nothing happened for you know weeks on end which would be the more reality of space. <laughs> So I, I think it depends on what you consider to be a massive phenomena. Um, we also have the added benefit of like, so as dangerous, the funny thing is, as dangerous as the solar wind is when, when moving about in our own solar system, um, the, the shock bow that's created by the sun's solar wind provides similar protection to the solar system that like Earth's magnetosphere does where it keeps out other more harmful radiation from external to the solar system. Like every once in a while, it even happened last week. We had a huge burst of energy detected and they, they don't know, at least at the point of this recording, we don't know where it came from. Um, it stopped shortly thereafter. It may have been a gamma ray based burst. They're not sure. Uh, if we were outside of the solar system and got hit by that gamma ray burst, you would be dead instantly. So like not super rare happens like recordably, like at least once a quarter. And, and that's just on earth. I would assume that if we were outside the solar system, we'd you know be impacted by a lot more than that. Man, space sounds dangerous. I don't think we should be out there. <laughs> it, it's super dangerous, man. Space is scary, dog. Like until we get shielding down, right? Like we, we need to stay out of there. <laughs> it's just, this just, this is nuts. Yeah. So anyway, space storms. So, so here's a fun, here's a fun, like this is not related to anything, but something that um, is an interesting fact that like you, you know, but you don't know, maybe. So like, you know what a sonic boom is? Cause we're talking about bow wakes and shit, right? You know what a sonic mm -hmm. boom is? Yep. Like an airplane. Are you going to talk about astro astronaut eyes? No, I'm not. So. Oh. An airplane goes faster than the speed of sound. It creates what's called a sonic boom, right? And that is, like, so loud that, like, it's not legal to break the sound barrier over the U.S., right? Because you can, like, break windows and shit. Right. 
So here's a question for you guys. What protects the pilot's ears from the sonic boom? Do you know the answer? I do know the answer, and so do you, but you have to think about it. Do they pump air into the helmet? Nope. I have no idea. What Um, protects a pilot breaking the sound barrier from the sound of the sonic boom? Are they just in front of the sound barrier created? And... And they're They're moving moving away from it? it. They're moving faster than sound. Yes, that's exactly right. So they don't have to worry about sound ear protection because they're just going faster Faster than than the sound that they're making. That's cool. It's fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) It's one of those things that's like so obvious, but like until you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That's funny. I thought you were going to talk about there. There's this um, phenomenon where uh, it's called cosmic ray phenomenon where astronauts see like flashing lights inside their eyes, even though yes. their eyes are closed. Yes. Um, it, it's because radiation is passing through their eyeballs and you know, they can terrible. visually see it, but they can't actually see it when their eyes are open because it's, it's not you can actually, um, I forget what frequency it is. You can sim like that happens on earth with some kind of procedure. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's standard x-rays. It may be in the MR. No, I don't think it's an MRI. It may be during a CAT scan. You're yeah. They, like a CAT scan of your head and you close your eyes. You can see that you can see them sometimes. Yeah. It, it doesn't happen all the time, but yes, it's the, yeah, the same it's just, a, it's, it, the, the, it's, it's like the radiation happening to bounce off of some of the fluid in your eye and like causing mm-hmm. just a, a brief like activation of your, of your cells. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I remember there was, I think it was, oh, I can't remember her name. She's a very popular astrophysicist on Dr. Dr. Becky, I think, on YouTube. Um, she was talking about how astronauts see these things, and it's it's similar to like a sonic boom, but for light in some ways. I, I thought that's where you were going with the story. Oh, no. Oh, you're talking about, so what you're describing is Cherenkov radiation. Yes. That's, that's where... That's that. So that flash of light when the Enterprise enters warp, that is a burst of Cherenkov radiation. And that is effectively the sonic boom of light. Um, yep. We see it a lot when like in, in inside like nuclear reactors underwater, because yeah. the speed of light is the speed of light through a vacuum. As soon as it goes through water, it's actually going slower and you could start breaking the speed of light in water. And when yeah. you break the speed of light, you get a burst of what is called Cherenkov radiation, which is like a dull bluish glow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. actually. Well, it's cool until you see it in the atmosphere because uh, apparently they could in over Chernobyl, which is terrifying. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not bad. great. Yeah. No. <laughs> I need to watch that show. Apparently it's really good. It's great. It's really awesome. All right. Well, um, why don't we take a break here and we'll come back for some puppery. Welcome back, everybody. So this week for Potpourri, I was originally supposed to, uh, I signed everyone homework to uh, do a pitch of a new Star Trek show. I then immediately forgot about it. Um, (laughs) Did anyone else do the homework? I did. Yep. Okay, great. So it's just me. Perfect. So we're going (laughs) to save that for next week. Great. And instead... um, we exchanged gifts with my family last week, and one of the things I got in my stocking from my lovely wife is a video game trivia card game. Okay? Um, this episode being Catwalk, finding ways to amuse yourself while uh, doing basically nothing for eight days. I figured, you know what? What would we do? We'd be playing some fucking video games. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. the... Trivia game I have prepared is basically I'm going to read some of these cards and see what y'all get right. I cannot attest to the quality of this. I can tell you that the front of the box says, do you have enough lives to beat this quiz? So it's probably not going to be great. (laughs) Oh, God. Definitely some strong, like somebody who's never actually played video games energy. (laughs) Yes. Although the back of the box mentioned Pyramid Head. So it's at least going to be like... All right. Semi obscure oh. stuff. If this doesn't go well, then we can pull out the D&D Trivial Pursuit. Holy game. fuck. It's the Ooh. hardest shit. The D&D Trivial Pursuit game does not fuck around. 
I, I, I would do terrible, I'm sure. Oh, you would? I do terrible. <laughs> D&D is literally my day I'd, job, and I'm terrible I'd, at it. I'd be like, Rob. I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm not going to vet these i am just going to start reading um Perfect. oh man this shit is gonna be terrible all right here we go um actually so why don't we do this why don't i pick on someone and you try to answer it and if you don't know the other person can steal it from you all right and then we'll we'll just do some points sounds great okay all right so um rob okay by what name was the classic video game Another World known in North America? Um, Earthbound? That is not correct. I have no idea. Chris, do you know? Was it Mist? No, it's called Out of This World. I've never heard of this game I've ever. I've never heard of it. I've game. never heard of it either. All right, this game I know we've heard of. This one is for Chris. The design of the iconic creeper from Minecraft was the result of a failed attempt to create which other Minecraft creature? I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say a, a zombie. That is not correct. Rob? Really? Enderman? What'd you say? Enderman? No, it was the pig. What? What? <laughs> How do you fail that bad? Well, and that what? might explain why it, I'm assuming that's why it has the four feet on the bottom, because they're supposed to be like pig feet. Good God. I don't... It's pixel art. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, man, these are... Uh, oh, man. These get tough. All right, hold on. I'm going to pick a random Get card. tough. Mm, okay. <laughs> Rob, what was the first 3D game in the Bomberman video game series? Uh, Bomberman 64? That is correct. Better first right answer. Yay! Woo! All right. I love that game. That was a great that was game. A good game. Yeah. All right, uh, Chris, what is the family name of the main antagonists of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard? Oh, shit, I didn't play that. I don't, I don't know. Carpenter? <laughs> oh, weirdly close. Oh, really? No, <laughs> not right, Rob. <laughs> Forrester? <laughs> no, although eh, that's a little less close. It's Baker. So it was like a profession. Baker. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think the last Resident Evil I played was like four. Oh, uh, Rob. Set in a hospital, what is the name oh, of the first campaign in the 2008 game Left for Dead? <sighs> oh, God. We played that game a bunch, too. We played the we shit out of this game, but this is a pretty obscure question. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. Um, I don't know. Trauma Medical? No. Chris, do you have an idea? I don't know, Pine Grove Hospital? Fuck. <laughs> it, the campaign was called No Mercy. Oh, uh, No Mercy. Yeah, I remember that now. All right, Chris. Hard fucking questions. Jesus. Yeah. PT was a, quote, playable teaser for which canceled video game? What? <laughs> That's oh. about the answer I expected. What? Is that even a question? It is. Do you know it, Rob? Like, what do you, what? I, I don't know the name of the game, but I have watched many a streamer play through it. It's really incredible. It was supposed to be, like, a masterpiece of horror that unfortunately got canned, and everyone was super disappointed about it. God, what is the name of the game? Oh, man. You do, you kind of know then. Chris, do you have any guesses? What was it again? PT <laughs> was a playable teaser for which canceled video game? Rob has given you so many clues right there. I, 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 I don't know this at all. Mm. Rob, I do you have a guess? I can't remember. Silent Hills. Oh, never heard of it. <laughs> all right, Rob. You should watch some, some videos of it. It's really freaking cool. What group from the Elite Dangerous community is renowned for saving players who are stranded in deep space without fuel? Oh, God. Um... Oh, I read an article about these guys. Uh, is it like space rats or something like that? That's that's close enough, given how hard these are. They're the fuel rats. Yes, fuel rats. Interesting. Nice. Interesting these guys are obscure trivia. I I read an article. It was a like a game journalist that um, like basically interned with them to learn about the game. It was pretty neat. They're, they they seem like a real cool crew. All right, Chris. This one you should probably get. Which 2020 simulator game uses information from Bing Maps to simulate the topography of the entire Earth? 
Oh, it's a flight simulator, right? That's right. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yep. Rob, to what home appliance was the design of the Xbox Series X compared, prompting Microsoft to create that appliance in the shape of the console? Um, a mini fridge? That is correct. It's a fridge, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Chris, which 2019 game by Square Enix features characters and worlds from Monsters, Inc., Frozen, and Big Hero 6? Uh, uh, it's that like that's the Disney like mashup game with like Sora and the key and it's I don't remember which one close it is, close but... enough in Kingdom Hearts three yeah, yeah Kingdom Hearts yeah 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 like if you're naming characters out of it like <laughs> not knowing the title is fine. <laughs> Rob, which console released worldwide was the first to include a built-in modem for online gaming? I know this PlayStation Two. Incorrect, Chris. Oh. Can you repeat the question? Which console released worldwide was the first to include a built-in modem for online gaming? Was it Dreamcast? It was Dreamcast. Okay. Nicely oh, done. Oh, God. Tied yeah. it up. Rob, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is for Chris. Which actor provided the voice and performance capture for the character of Monkey in the 2010 game Enslaved Odyssey to the West? I've never heard of this. Um, which actor provided the voice and performance capture for the character of monkey in that game you've never heard of? Is it in 2010? 2010. Who was big in 2010? Uh, who was good? Who was big in voices and motion capture in the early uh, 2000s? Hmm. Uh, what's the name of the Smeagol actor? I can't that think is, of That name. is correct. Andy Circus. That is correct. Andy Circus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. Rob, what Star Wars space combat game was released in October 2020? 2020. 2020. 2020. Um, Squadrons. That's right. We played the fuck out of that for like a week. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, good. That was fun. Man, Man. We had a good time with that game. I have, I have never wanted esports to exist so bad for a game. Oh, that would have been a great esports game. Yeah, that'd yeah. be fun. All right, um, let's do one more card, and then if you're tied, we'll do a tiebreaker. What is the full name? Eh, I don't like the full name part. If you give me the main names and the title, I'll, I'll count that. You don't need the first name. What is the full name of the nine foot six inch tall vampire like antagonist in Resident Evil Village? That's for you, Chris. Oh, um, uh, the 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 vampire mommy lady. <laughs> Yeah, the internet went insane for this lady. What was her name? Yeah. I I actually did play that, now that I think about it, and I don't remember her name at all. Oh, uh, Rob, do you remember? Oh my god, I'm gonna sound real awful for saying this. I think it's like Lady Dimitri. It's Dimitrescu? Yes, yeah, that's uh, it. Okay. <laughs> do we give it to him? I don't know. Uh, no. All right, all right, all right. Which, this is for you, Rob, which means you okay. could win here if you get it right. Which home console was the first to contain a Blu-ray disc player? Blu-ray disc player. Uh, PlayStation 3. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that Nicely one too. done. Yeah, that's actually... Ooh. I um, We got a PlayStation 3 just because we needed a way to play Blu-rays. For that's like, when I was... <laughs> oh, sorry. For, for like the year that we were using Blu-rays and then we switched to streaming of everything. Uh. Yeah, that's when I was working at Best Buy, so, like, i definitely do that one. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, man. This game has so many cards, so, like, we can do this again in the future. Um, or never again, because it's hard as shit. Oh, it was fun. There was definitely bad. some very obscure ones in there that I was like, what? I skipped yeah. some cards that were like, I don't know. They're, each card has two questions on it. I skipped cards that were like, I don't know either of these questions. Mm. Like, I've never even heard of these games. Hey, you, you know why I don't I don't mind this one? Uh, this is the first trivia I've ever won on this show. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> it only took one and a half seasons. Uh, that's depressing, Rob. You should really feel bad about yourself. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for another exciting week of Captain's Log Supplemental. Uh, if you could do us a huge favor, go out, rate, review, leave us a, leave us a, you know, some kind of uh, feedback. 
Um, as uh, Chris is inclined to tell us, uh, you should give us five stars because we are five star men and a lady. Um, send me an email. Yeah, you know, I respond to those because no one else is doing it. Um, theoretically, at some point, we should get some some word out on the Reddit's because uh, you know we need some more ears on the podcast. So uh, if you see uh, if you see some shit on Reddit about us, uh, go ahead and uh, give that some love too. Otherwise, we will see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening to Captain's Log Supplemental. You can follow us on Twitter at PodCLS or send us hate mail at PodCLS3 at gmail.com.